My name is Sam Spencer and I'm the lead developer for the Aristotle Metadata Registry. Uh, and what I'm here to talk to you today about is uh, Aristotle as an open source metadata framework and also look at some of the case studies we've been working on recently to examine how improved metadata management is actively helping institutes already around the world uh, improve their data management practices. So to talk about uh, Aristotle and uh, metadata in general, um, we're going to look at like, some of the screens and some of the use cases around what metadata management means for people uh, in institutes today. Now, metadata in general, uh, one of the biggest use cases are, is around search and discoverability of data. Uh, metadata is effectively the way that we understand the context in which data is collected or data is used. And one of the biggest challenges in, in metadata management and research data management has been how to effectively expose this cheaply, easily, and, and in a way that's actually production ready. So this is the, the main interface for the, uh, the open registry that we've put up, that we've launched in open beta this week. And what it allows people to do is it allows them to dig in and search through uh, data sets from uh, a number of institutes now to start effectively looking at how data is stored uh, in government institutes around Australia. What this does is it allows them to see uh, data sets in a large number of contexts and then dig deeper again and start looking at what the, the, the context around this data is, why it's collected, and, and more importantly, how it's collected. The context of metadata in this case allows us to go even further to start looking at individual elements within a data set and understand the context of it. This example here we can see is a person's date of birth, but even that has context around it. So in this case it's stored as a day, month, year, but in other contexts it could be month, day, year, or just month, year, or in some cases just year. It's important in this data set to understand how it's collected and why it's collected like this. Um, and the way that we understand the context of how this, this metadata is constructed is to look at the standard on which Aristotle was built. Um, but we'll do that after we look at the editing screen. So the other important uh, piece of information to, to understand here is we're looking at how uh, metadata can also be created. So how it can be created and uploaded into a registry for search and discovery. And that's one of the other features that we've kind of uh, built into this platform is the ability for people to edit metadata within the registry uh, to keep it up to date to, to be able to keep it usable. Um, and the way that we do that is we implement a standard called ISO 11179. And the idea behind ISO 11179, despite its very, very long name, is to describe a very, very simple structure for understanding the context of data. What it does is it breaks things down into data elements and breaks those down further again into who, what, and how was data recorded to understand what it is. So in our example, we see person age, and then that gets broken down through all these contexts into these very, very discrete uh, ideas. So that if I'm looking for person age in years, I can identify data in the database with which it's stored. Um, but if I'm only interested in just the general concept of a person's age, I can find data that conforms to this um, without digging any further in. The way that we've constructed Aristotle is also enables us to record metadata from a number of additional contexts. So it allows us to record data sets, questions, or health indicators at a very, very granular level that's been able to be reused by a number of institutes. We've done this by also uh, implementing the Django web framework. The open source and, and object-oriented framework of Django allows us to implement ISO 11179 quite accurately that allows us to re-implement new metadata formats and new metadata standards within the registry without having to, to break the standard or extend it too far. The object-oriented approach that we've used has also allowed us to build in functionality so that as uh, additional institutes describe their own extensions or describe their own metadata, this allows them to take advantage of the editing screens, all of the search functionality, and high availability database storage for metadata that you know, should be standard now. Um, the reason that we chose the Django Web Framework is actually because it's got a high pedigree. Um, I think that open source is amazing from, from a management and usability perspective, but what we were looking for is we were looking for something that was effectively being used around the world. 
The Django Web Framework isn't just used by, by open source aficionados like myself, it's also powering systems of the Open Knowledge Foundation, NASA, and even Instagram is powered by Django. So this is a high availability system that's available you know, for a lot of people to use in the open source community. Um, and now I want to talk about why metadata exists. Like, one of the things that I've noticed in a lot of institutes is they focus on metadata as, as effort that needs to go in to describe content after the fact. What we need to be looking at is metadata as a way that enables additional activity to be performed, additional research to be done so that we understand what research is, is effectively out there and how it's achieving outcomes. Um, to look at this, I want to look at a use case that we've been building around using metadata to validate and find additional data sets to encourage researchers to not only store metadata, but reuse it later on in an effective way. What we did was we went and looked for metadata that exist in, existed in the Australian context. And the example we, we looked at, and one of the, the registries that helped uh, build some of the design for how we wanted to build Aristotle was the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare's Media or Metadata Registry. By using the XML API that they provided, we were able to build a large corpus of public metadata that's freely available for us to ingest into our system to start looking at how metadata could be effectively used by researchers. Um, the reason that we chose Media was just because of the broad context of information that was out there. Um, with you know, 25,000 elements, it gave us a very, very large corpus of information to start searching on, to start building research around. One of the tools that we were looking at was the data map. Now, what we were looking at here is assisting researchers and data archives in the record recording of metadata after the fact. When an individual's gone out and done research, they've got a raw data set, but they need to effectively describe it. The theory that we were working on was the idea that a column of data is actually quite self-descriptive. Date formats look like date formats. Uh, a coded set of values looks like a coded set of values. If I see a column of data that's only one, two, or three, I can draw some inferences about what that is. Um, if that coded value of one, two, and three has an occupation level or, or a sex or an age bracket, I can start building some understanding of what that could be. But the challenge was, can we actively programmatically start mining data to build metadata? And the answer is yes. So in this example, we've fed in some uh, patient data, or some, 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 some dummy patient data, I should say. We've fed it into the registry to start examining what kind of metadata exists for it. So here we can see it's identified a code list for the first two columns. It's identified date of birth, sex, indigenous status, and the accuracy of a date record um, just based on three rows of data. So just from this small data set, we've got a good understanding of what this candidate data set specification could be. Uh, from there, we can select data elements, and we've already documented this data set. From just a raw CSV, we've been able to effectively find all of the necessary metadata for it to be matched against data sets uh, around Australia. The other one that we're looking at was the idea of a metadata validator. So is it again possible to use this metadata as a specification for how data is constructed and use that to validate data that exists? Um, in this example, again, we've decided that we've chosen to validate this against a, a nationally available public dental waiting times data set. I've got some data that I've reported, I've collected it, I need to know if this is going to conform so that I can store it within my, my appropriate data archive. And immediately I can see there are errors. Um, this date of birth is too long, uh, this, this sex code has been recorded invalidly, uh, as has the, the indigenous status code, that should be uh, in the state column, and uh, again, another invalid code over here. So immediately from the data set that I've been given, from the idea that it should conform to a set of metadata, I can use that to strictly type the data that's been collected and give immediate feedback prior to, to depositing this data with an archive. Um, the second case study I'd like to look at is some work that we've been doing with a financial literacy program in Canada where we were looking at the recording of indicators for social progress. 
In this example, what we're looking at here is the ability to track uh, questions and track questions that are asked of respondents over time to ensure that they're being asked correctly in the right context and are effectively measuring the program's success. Uh, in this case, when we're looking at non-profit organisations, there are very low budgets that need to be conformed with. Poorly performing programs need to either be identified or brought up to scratch with other existing programs. So what we're looking at here is the ability to compare metadata and compare it across time. Um, the first use case here is the, just the ability to, for people to find the correct information. So this is the ability to browse through a registry to identify indicators as they've been set up by researchers to be able to effectively describe them within questions and questionnaires. Um, secondly, there's the ability for us to compare metadata across time. So is metadata the same? Can it be used in appropriate contexts? Um, the two that we were looking at here was the ability for someone to build a basket of metadata and then compare them side by side to ensure they're being used in the appropriate ways. Uh, secondly, we wanted to be able to look at two very, very similar indicators or two very, very similar pieces of metadata and do a very, very detailed analysis and comparison. So here, uh, what we're looking at is the ability to cover expenses and the ability to cover bills. And we can identify that most of the question text and most of the definitions are the same, but we can immediately see where the differences lie without having to, to read through and kind of strike out the, the similarities. We allow the system to do this for us. Um, and the good news is, is this is open today. Um, earlier this week, we launched into an open beta for, for researchers and archivists to start testing the system and, and depositing metadata with our, within our open registry so that they can start creating and publishing content in a format that, that is accessible to users around the world. Um, but it's not just that. The other thing that we're looking at is a cloud-hosted solution for archives and for depositing agencies who are looking at managing metadata in their own context within their, with only their own uh, users able to subscribe. What we've been looking at is we've been looking at deploying Django as a high availability service over the, the, the Amazon Web Services framework uh, by using the EC3, uh, RDS, uh, Elastic Bean Search and Elasticsearch uh, functionality, we've been able to, to look at how the architecture for an open source, high availability metadata registry might look. And, and it's going to look very similar to this with Aristotle on top, naturally. Um, so this is the context in which we're building. Like Metadata isn't a thing that, that researchers should do because it's good for the archives. Metadata is, a, is an active part of the research process that can be used now and later on to improve discoverability and improve the ability to track data across time. 